Hello, my name is Nicolas Kluger. I am a dermatologist in the Helsinki University Hospital in Finland and I am also in charge of the tattoo consultation at the Hospital Bichat Claude Bernard in Paris. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, chronic inflammatory diseases, immunosuppressions and the possibility to get a tattoo. Alors very briefly I just remind you that tattoos are extremely uh, popular nowadays, almost 20% of the population aged over 18 in Western countries has one or more tattoos on his body. So it is really something legitimate to ask about when you are a patient whether you can get a tattoo if you are willing to get one. Now, as we get the big ideas in, in about tattooing, first the tattooist should always work in a tattoo shop or in a tattoo studio. It's not acceptable to have a tattoo done at home or in a garage or somewhere else. The tattooist should comply to the local and national rules of hygiene and asepsis, depending on the country. And it is of course better if the tattooist has undergone uh, proper training uh, for hygiene and asepsis, and this depends on the countries. However, since uh, February 2020, there has been now a European uh, standardization that has been uh, provided that is available on the internet that can be accessed by Tatwist which provides all the good procedure regarding uh, hygiene procedure during tattooing. So what is a tattooing? Briefly it's a chemical uh, it's a, it's a uh, I would say a chemical uh, a, compli a complex uh, chemistry because it is about pigments uh, it, but it also binders, who binds, uh, solvents and additives, so it's not only about colorant. Uh, in Europe there is now a resolution that was proposed by the Council of Europe in 2008, which uh, proposed a framework for the composition and the labeling of products used for tattoos and permanent makeup. Uh, the risk evaluation required before product is used for tattooing and permanent makeup, the condition of application of the tattoo and makeup, and the obligation to inform public and consumer about the health risk of tattoos and uh, permanent makeup. Just an example of what it looks like, this resolution, for instance, there is a maximum allowed concentration of impurities that are allowed in tattooings, for instance, you can see in this table arsenic, barium, cadmium, cobalt, nickel, and there's a concentration to respect if an ink was to be tested in Europe by officials and it was found that the composition is not respecting this maximum concentration, it would be withdrawn immediately from the market. So it provides a bit of safety uh, for the customer, even though the legislation is not still perfect. However, the resolution is not applied by every country, so as you can see, it really depends on the countries. Some have not implemented it, some have implemented it, some are using it as a basis, so it really depends where you live. These data are from 2016. Alors, what is the risk and complication for now a patient with an autoimmune disease or an inflammatory disease? It's very simple. The complications are exactly the same as anyone who would get a tattoo. You are exposed to uh, healing delays, local or systemic infection, color allergy, granulomas, tumors, hopefully they are quite exceptional, uh, maybe a flare of the uh, disease, and of course, and mainly a dissatisfaction of the tattoo because you don't really like it. However, regarding patients with conditions, autoimmune conditions or something else, um, it is uh, important to uh, take, know about healing delays, local infection and also possibility of uh, flare of disease. There is four actors that are to take into account, the disease, the treatment, the tattooist and possible comorbidities and we're going to go through it. Well the disease, the first thing in which is kind of normal and logic, uh, disease should not be active, it should be uh, controlled, stable, non-evolutive when you want to get a tattoo. It is true that there are some conditions, some autoimmune disease or some auto-inflammatory disease or inflammatory disease that can sometimes manifest with skin lesions and sometimes these skin lesions may happen on the tattoo. However, it can happen after tattooing or during the whole life of the bearer, and then we treat them as any of the skin lesions. There are some areas that will have to be uh, at all cost avoided, 
you don't tattoo on any pre-existing skin lesions like a mole or if you are not sure you should not anyway tattoo anything you have already on the skin for people suffering from systemic scleroderma it is clear that you should avoid getting a tattoo on a sclerodermatous skin meaning if the disease affects the hand and the forearm or affects the legs you cannot really tattoo in these areas because you're going to expose yourself to a problem of healing delay because the skin is not similar however if your skin is normal for instance on the upper body and you still have the normal laxity of your skin a tattoo is not to be contraindicated and at last if you have a paralyzed limb it's important to not tattoo this area because there are some modifications in the circulation and it can have an, an effect on the healing and again you can expose yourself to delay, uh, delay, uh, delayed healing possibly infection regarding immunosuppressive treatments of course it is the same as for the disease you don't tattoo in case or you have a high dose of a treatment or you have just started it or you're just in an attack phase you should consider a tattoo only if you are at a minimal dosage that you have been having for months, for years, or a maintenance dose. For instance, for all corticotherapy, which we know will impact the uh, healing and may have an effect after tattooing, and that we have observed, you cannot really do it if you are over 10 milligrams per day because it affects uh, the tattoo healing. Under it, it can be discussed. For other systemic immunosuppressive treatment or biologic, it has to be discussed case by case. Colchicine, disulone, or hydroxychloroquine have no effect on the on the healing process, and they can be used with no they can be kept with no problem. There is no reason, uh, from my point of view, that they should have any caution for a tattooing uh, in any kind. The Club Rheumatism and Inflammation has provided recently tool guides regarding tattooing. Uh, they are accessible uh, on internet. So tattooing is considered a, a surgical procedure with low risk of infection. If the treatment is stopped, the delay before starting again the biologics will depend on the drug. And yet again, the tool guides provide you uh, delays to respect that you have to uh, uh, respect after tattooing. Of course, the tattoo should be fully healed without any infectious or inflammatory sign before starting the treatment again. For the tattooist, it's, as I told you, a professional tattooist in a tattoo shop. You have to warn the tattooist about your condition. It should not be hidden and you should tell him also about the treatments. Of course, the hygiene has to be already flawless, but it has to be extra for you. Uh, I would even suggest that the tattooist open new bottles specifically for you and not use an old bottle that has been already used for previous customers. I also suggest for the very first session that uh, the session is as short, shorter as usual and to avoid uh, long sessions or intense sessions where the tattooist will make lots of passage on the same area because we need to see how your skin or you need to see how your skin reacts to the tattooing procedure. And of course, any local uh, symptom, systemic symptom that happens after tattooing uh, should prompt you to seek advice to your uh, uh, treating physician. For the comorbidities, uh, you have to take into account the rest, of course. It's not only your disease, but if you have something else, if you have diabetes, if you have cirrhosis, all these kind of diseases that can affect uh, your health has to be taken into account. Uh, we will talk very quickly in the next slides about the co congenital heart disease because there's a risk of heart infection after tattooing. And if you take antiplatelet therapy like aspirin, if you have an anticoagulation, an antivitamin K, there is an increased risk of bleeding and at least it should be uh, bring to the attention of the tattoo is that you may bleed a bit more than usual during the tattoo session because of this treatment. So all that has to be also included in the discussion that you will have with your physician. This is some example. This is an example that was published several years ago. It's a, a sad story of a man which is 31 year old who went to a bath in the sea after having got a tattoo, uh, as you can see. Unfortunately, because of the seawater, a germ went through the skin and uh, was responsible from a septic, septic shock and the patient died of this infection due to this germ called Vibrio vulnificus. Uh, this patient was not totally healthy because he was suffering from cirrhosis and the sea bass after tattooing is, should be forbidden. But you can see the effect of, a very, uh, of an immunosuppressive uh, background uh, before tattooing. So it's really not something that you should uh, think that it's something that should be treated lightly. 
Another example of the literature, this very small rash in this patient, which looks like nothing, but this patient has a renal transplant, so a very high immunosuppression. And when the samples were taken, there was this very unusual fungus that was found, from mold, which was found in the, in the, in the skin. And the patient had, had to have three months of oriconazole, so it's a very important uh, fungal treatment. Uh, three months for this infection because most likely or because of his background of immunosuppression and maybe a tattoo which is not totally done in a good condition, in good health, in good um, hygiene and, and asepsis, maybe response from this very unusual germ. So you really have to keep that in mind. For heart disease, it's very exceptional. Heart disease after uh, after um, tattooing, I mean infectious heart disease of the valve called endocarditis, which can be very dangerous and very severe, which can lead to replacing your valve. Uh, so if you suffer from a congenital heart disease, you have a knowledge of, for instance, of a, of a heart murmur, you should ask your cardiologist first about tattooing procedure. Uh, I think patients should get uh, antibioprophylaxis, meaning you take antibiotics before or after the tattooing procedure, uh, the same a bit like you do uh, before um, uh, dental treatments. Uh, it may be a bit too much, but I think because the risk of endocarditis, the consequences are so high that I think you can take, the, take this antibiotic before, but then it has to again be discussed with your cardiologist. And after tattooing, any unusual symptoms, fever, flu-like, malaise, pain in the muscle weeks after tattooing even if the tattoo is normal you should immediately seek advice to be sure that it's not endocarditis which can be one of the symptoms so this is how uh, a tattoo shop looks like you can see it's very clean with material which are sterilized single use and you can see also disinfectant that even we use is, uh, even at our job of course it's strictly forbidden to get a tattoo in a Tattoo con uh, sorry, not in tattoo condition, but in a, in a buses, as you can see, or this kind of places. It's no no home tattooing, no garage. You go to a professional tattooist who works in a uh, in a tattoo shop, and even a professional tattooist who goes to your home, it's a no go. It's in a dedicated place in uh, your city. Um, and I'll just remind you for if you have never seen a tattoo, what happens is that you go to the tattooist, you discuss a drawing, he will prepare you something, call you back, you book an appointment, then he will apply the drawing directly on the skin, starts to draw, and you can see that the inflammation starts uh, very quickly after tattooing, and you can see it bleeds a bit. This is a uh, bleeding that is left on purpose, but you can see how it looks like. And then when it's over, you see the very strong inflammation immediately after the session. So it's quite intensive actually. Healing phase normally in normal people last two to three weeks before the tattoo is normal. You will have to respect aftercare. Usually it's washing uh, the tattoo with water and soap, lukewarm water for two to three times a day. You will have to apply a moisturizing cream. There's lots of different brands, usually based with pantenol, but you have lots of different creams that you can apply or that the tattooist will recommend you. No sun, no sea water, no swimming, no sport because of the friction. And you respect most of all the tattooist recommendation. Some tattooists have different habits. You just follow them to the tattooist you've been to. It's kind of logic. And this is how it looks like when it heals. You see the skin starts to peel away. It's normal. The epidermis sheds away. So it gives this very strange that you can feel at the first time that your tattoo is going away. It's not true. It's there. It's under. It's just the, the superficial layers of the skin that are regenerating that are going away in, in this aspect. To conclude, there is no absolute contraindication for tattooing. There is only relative contraindications that are unrelated, that are related, sorry, uh, to your condition, your treatments, and the timing. When do you want to get the tattoo? The main risk we fear for you is delay of healing and infection, and it can be both. Sometimes it's very difficult to make the difference. We will, if you have a complication of delay healing, we may have to take treat by antibiotics anyway for safety. And the third problem with the germs is that sometimes they can be very unusual, as you have seen in the previous slides. And I insist, it's not a strict contraindication. We can always delay your tattoo to a better time when you are more controlled in your uh, disease. I still remind you that tattooing, it's really, think about it, avoid impulsive tattoo, take a good decision, think about it, look really for what you want, go to tattoos that are recommended, that are known, that have good reputation, you, you can change, you can go and see different tattoos, you should not have fear that. Uh, it's a service that you pay for, and you pay a lot for something that will stay for your life, and I remind you that choose this wisely because the first complication I fear for you is not infection or it's not delay healing, but it's more like an ugly tattoo. So really think about it. Thank you very much. <laughs>